Welcome to another episode of the Impossible Life Podcast. I'm your co-host, Nick Surface, and I'm looking across at a man who recently replaced Solomon as the wisest man of all time on a Google search. That's right, friends, the former Navy SEAL. <laughs> Garrett Unklebach, a man who has fought and successfully defeated AI. <laughs> you know how you get the Gemini results now, which I, uh, I was interested. I oh, did a funny. Google search on who's the wisest man alive. And uh, they hey, said what, Solomon. It said oh, Solomon. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's so, good. So I, I thought that was kind of interesting that AI, you know, went to the Bible. So, you know, there's hope for us yet. Maybe the AI knows what you want to hear. Well, that's just ruining everything, isn't it? Yeah, this guy, an individualized I want, algorithm. Yeah, you know, because like Instagram does that. Yeah, does yeah, for AI sure. I have an algorithm. Well, yeah, and we could go down a rabbit hole. I was recently uh, with some people who are very knowledgeable in AI. Yeah. So this is some interesting conversations. As you may or may not have guest friends out there, today we are talking about wisdom and uh i really want to do a different intro for garrett about how he's the spirit animal for owls because he's so wise but unfortunately i already did that one uh a long time ago and i'm not a big fan of owls why is that i just don't like them they can turn their head all the way around it's weird that is that a real <laughs> dude so garrett has like random beefs with animals we've covered that you have a beef with ostriches is do you, that's a real beef i'm just not like not just not a fan of owls i think they're kind of weird there's other animals that you don't feel very fond of as well i can't i'm struggling to remember which one we don't I, need to go down that no road. we don't but there's you definitely have some anyways opinion man we could do like we could do a whole other thing garrett's opinions because you you have an opinion on everything a lot anyways. of experiences you'll rack up a few scars Okay, I'll, uh, I'll take your word on that, actually, um, as I'm looking at the knife wound from our last hunting trip. <laughs> Anyways. Learned a lesson there. I did learn a lesson there, man. What was the first, what did Pop say to you? Oh, he, he said, he took a picture and then he was like, he's like, I bet you won't forget that. What are you doing? He's like, you, and he just told me I knew better. He than said, what have you learned? That, is that what he said? Yeah. Yeah. What, what did I say? I can't remember. I was bleeding everywhere. <laughs> so, something sarcastic, unfortunately. Did I really? Yeah. Oh, man. You remember what I said, don't you? Yeah. You're going to have to tell me when we get done because I can't remember. I, I have a different version of the story in my head that's probably a lot better uh, than what actually happened. Dang it. Anyways. All right. So we're talking about wisdom today. Now, here's the thing about wisdom. Um, wisdom is it's, it's so funny because for a lot of people out there, I think we have a lot of people who are Christians that listen to our podcast. They're going to be like, yeah, wisdom. Like, yeah, I know wisdom. Love it. Like, I know it's important, right? I feel like in society as a whole, you don't really hear people talk about wisdom except for like for elderly people. That's that's like the only time you'll be like, oh, they're old. They're, you know, they're, it's like, you know, you've got the wise old owl is like the, uh, you know, the the stereotype. But you don't hear it talked about the way that you would expect it considering how in, valuable in, it is. Yeah. In, in common language or in common culture, there's more authority. And I'm not saying there's nothing, there's anything wrong with this, but I would say people give more authority to like facts or science than they do to wisdom. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And there's a big difference, which we're going to get into. So here's an interesting stat for you today, G. Uh, recently, the APA, which is the American Psychological Association, uh, did th what they call their happiness or their stress study for the for the year 2023, where they asked people on average how, how stressed they felt on a day-to-day -day basis. And unsurprisingly, Gen Z led the way with a average score of six out of 10. For, for the Gen Z uh, age group, the average person said 3.4. So that means that Gen Z is almost twice as stressed as the normal person. They said that people that are older are a lot better at dealing with stress, mainly because they give back, which is very interesting. And, and what do we just say? Wisdom, typically people say like, oh, you're the wise old owl. So you have these people who are walking around that are feeling very stressed out because they're going through a lot of change. I mean, there's definitely some of that is the season of life that they're in as you're kind of making that, your way. It makes me think of the, uh, remember the, the guys we caught on our YouTube video? Oh, man. Yeah, the guys that told us that this is the hardest time to live. Yeah, get, just re, re, recant that really <clears throat> quick. Well, we I was asking people uh, if, they, if they, I was asking them about relationships. Yeah. And they said that it's harder today to have a good relationship. And, and they said, and I said, well, why is that? And he's like, well, cause it's harder to live now than it ever has been. So you, so you followed up on that his <laughs> statement. Yeah. And I said, I was like, dude, this is the easiest time to be alive. Like a hundred years ago, people didn't know if they were going to make it through winter. And now you can order DoorDash literally to the beach. Like you could just be sat there and never have to and get then up. You said, so do you really think it's like the hardest time to be alive? And he was like, uh, he just went, oh, that's true. Well, your your experiences have a big impact yeah. on what you think stress is. Yeah. Well, and also for Gen Z, I mean, this is the first generation that's oh, with, that's grown up with technology. For sure. And that's one of the biggest things that they said. And this is going to get in. We're going to give you some practicals on how to grow in wisdom. But this is one of the things they said with Gen Z, which I thought was interesting about the stress point, is that they that, that they feel very isolated. And that's been a big thing. I mean, when, if you're only communicating in DMs or you're on social media all the time or you're with your device, I mean, it, it pains me to see how people are walking around just looking at their phones, not interacting with the world around them or the people at all. And so it's, it's not a surprise to me that when you look at that, like 
the younger you are, the more I think that you're typically going to struggle with wisdom. But then when you compound that with the fact that you're constantly getting new ideas and bombarded with messages all day, I think wisdom is a really undervalued asset. And so I thought that was kind of interesting that they put a, a, a physical number on that. And so I guess if you're listening to this, the question I would have for you is like, where do you think the average person goes for wisdom? And, and I think that that kind of highlights the point. I think the average person is getting their quote unquote wisdom from whatever guru they see when from, they're from Google. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm doing an AI search. Right. And like, you know, it told me that Garrett Unclebox is well, the wisest person on earth. And by, by Google, what I mean in that is what Google does, you realize, zoom out for a second, realize what Google is. It's an index. Right. It has surveyed all the information and it'll give you the answer that right. it thinks best fits your question. Right. What did people do before Google? They went and indexed themselves. Mm -hmm. They read the whole library. They figured out what was there. The Dewey Decimal now, System. Now we don't read the whole library. Right. We just say, you know, library, tell me where the answer that I want is. Yeah. And so your your information is limited by the index system that you use. Right. And so I'm not trying to like go down a um, conspiracy theory rabbit hole, but your information is limited to what Google tells you is valuable, yeah, which is and which is AI. And I was actually just at some of the some of the most beneficial things you get in learning is the journey that you took to learn something, right. not not just in having the answer. Yeah, and, and I actually was with an AI expert recently because I was shooting with a company that's in the tech industry at Cloud World. If you know anything about that, last week. And uh, she was saying that like the subject matter experts are, if they're a hundred percent deep, AI goes like twenty to thirty percent. So, and this is, and a lot of people are just going to type in their search, like, oh, this is what AI said, and it's like you'd like dipped your, you basically went in the two feet swim, and you're like, yeah, I know how to swim. No, you know how to walk up to your shins and and get that deep into the water. You have no idea what it's like to swim, right? And that's how people are going with 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 wisdom and knowledge, which is a frightening thing. So, gee, I guess the obvious question is like, what is wisdom? I would say the simplest answer of wisdom is knowing what to do, right? Right, and and whenever we were talking about this at Mighty Men the other day, where I think, and we'll, and this is kind of a theme that we'll come back to again. But the other day, I was talking at Mighty Men about somebody I've been. Uh, having a conversation with, and I told them that they're getting to the problems that are now wisdom problems. Right. They had gotten past the discipline problems. Discipline is do what you know to do, right? But then the next set of problems, right? You know you need to clean your room. You know you need to clean your car. You know you got to pay your taxes, all the little stuff. There's a lot of little stuff, right? Once you do all of those things, then the next question, the next problem you run into is, well, what do I do now? Yeah. Right? <clears throat> wisdom is knowing what to do. Wisdom is knowing not solve every problem. Wisdom is knowing the right problem to solve. So essentially, wisdom is knowing what to do. And it's also what what wisdom will do for you as well is know what's going to happen, hmm. right? Wisdom yeah. is principle-based. And we'll talk a little bit about some of the different types of wisdom. There's wisdom that comes from the Holy Spirit. There's wisdom that comes from experience. There's wisdom that comes from experience, which is the right use of knowledge, learning from things that have happened, right? Wisdom is principle-based. And so principles we've talked about principles on this podcast many times and those of you who are in mindset mastery you've gotten a much deeper yeah. understanding of principles principles will give you an understanding of what's going to happen because you understand the way the world works if right. it worked that way it's going to continue to work this way and so wisdom what it allows you to do is you can look at a situation and i'll tell you one of the most complicated areas where you need wisdom is with people yeah you don't need a ton of wisdom to fix a car you just need experience. You need to know what the manual says. Now, there is some wisdom that goes beyond what the manual says. The people who've done it many times right. over, they know how to do something that the book doesn't teach you to do. But in the areas in our life where we need the most wisdom, and this is also where we all have the majority of our experiences in, is with people. People are very difficult to deal with, and wisdom will help you understand how to deal well with people. Mm -hmm. It's to know what to do and to know what's going to happen. Yeah, and you said something when we were preparing for this that I thought was just so genius. You said that the question of wisdom when you're dealing with people is what part do I need to play to bring about the right end? Yeah, and that's, well, really where that comes from. If, if you think about what wisdom accomplishes, because... Um, to get to the right, like the definition, uh, the 1828 Webster's definition talks about that of getting to the right end. Yeah. And so what is the right end? Oh, you stole that from Webster? I thought that was you. <laughs> the, yeah, the the right end, right? What is the right end? Right. Think about this is God's right end. Yeah, for right? sure. It's what, it's what he's talking about all throughout that dictionary yeah. is getting to God's end, 
right? And so what is the right end? It's a, it's a form of justice. It's mm-hmm. not man's justice. And we've talked about that before in this podcast. It's not man's justice. It's God's justice. And so to do the right thing is really what pleases God. Mm-hmm. And so I want to go, I'm going to go to scripture here for a second, be just because we're talking about everything we do on the impossible life is biblically based. Yep. And certainly wisdom is something that I've gained from the Bible, not from the world. Yeah. And this, I want to, I want to, Talk about a piece of scripture that even if you've read this before, you might have missed this part, or it's not even the significant part of the scripture. But in First Kings chapter three, this is where Solomon asked the Lord for wisdom. Right? So God, I'll paraphrase super quick, but God comes to Solomon and says, Hey, what can I give you? And in a dream, Solomon answers verse First Kings chapter three, verse nine. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? By the way, what Solomon's asking for is how to govern people well. Right. It's where, like I said, it's where wisdom yeah. is most needed. Mm-hmm. But understand, let, hear this in uh, the Lord's am- answer to him, verse 10. The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. Wisdom pleases God, mm. yeah. right? And so that's what really um, wisdom will help you do things. And wisdom is a godly thing. And what I mean by that is wisdom will help you know how to do things, but it really just helps you think like God. And if you don't want to think like God, wisdom is not valuable to right. you. Right? Mm, wisdom is not always good. about winning. Wisdom is not always about seizing power. Wisdom isn't always about how do I get what I want. When you have a heart to please God, that's when you'll understand wisdom. When you have conflicts with people, there's a way that you can win and be wrong at the same time. Mm. Right? And wisdom will help you understand what would please God in this. Right. And so that's the purpose of wisdom. And I want, like, if you if that's not your desire, if you don't have a desire to please God, you're going to struggle in wisdom. Yeah, that's very good, G. And and, and we talked about this before, and because you said that knowledge is information, but wisdom is obviously knowing what to do. Wisdom informs your perspective. Not, knowledge is information. Wisdom is application. Right. It's and, knowing what to do. And so, like, what you just said about how you can you can win but still lose. This is where we see things that sometimes would confound and not make sense. Like we've talked about this before. The woman caught in adultery brought before Jesus. I mean. Knowledge is there. It's, it's right there. The information says she gets stoned. It's written in the Bible. But then you have this wisdom, this application of bringing it to the right end. And the right end there wasn't to stone her. And so that's why Jesus what said, What God hey, wants most isn't to punish us exactly. for our sins. Yeah. The law was created so that man, the, the whole purpose of the law was so that man could figure out, mm-hmm. what do I need to do to be close to God? Right. God didn't create the law to punish people. Right. Right. And so this is what J- Jesus acts out the law more than just punish you, here's what I can do to help you meet the right end. Yes. Right? The right end is that you would know God. And so, again, I just want to set this foundation as we talk about wisdom today. That's what wisdom is. It's to get to the right end. If you you already know what you want, wisdom might not take you down that road. Right. Just like we've talked about, like you've heard me say before, Nick, God will show up when you trust him and you say, God, whichever way you go, I want to go the Mm -hmm. way that you go. If you come to God and you say, God, I want to go this way, and I want you to help me go this way, and but if you don't help me, I'll go anyways, God's going to say, go for it. Yeah. You got it, right? Wisdom it starts with a bowing before the Lord and saying, God, I want to please you. I want your mm-hmm. way in this. Then he will reveal his way to you. Yeah, that's very good. And we're going to get, so just so you all know, I mean, what we're really hoping is that you understand more the value of wisdom, that you desire it when you're done listening to this, if you don't already, and that more than anything, that you just actively seek it. So we're going to get into the process of wisdom, how to grow in it, where it comes from, um, and give you a few kind of uh, pit, potential pitfalls to watch out for. While we're talking about what wisdom is, mm-hmm. another one of the aspects I want to cover about wisdom is that wisdom is eternal. Right. Yeah, it's the same way, again, wisdom uh, wisdom is based on principles. Principles is God's way of doing things. It's always been this way. It's always going to be this way, mm-hmm. right? Those who are, are with us in Mindset Mastery, you've learned about one of the ways that you discover principles is through patterns. Yeah. What continues to happen, yep. right? It gives you an understanding of things. Wisdom is eternal, and what I mean by that, not just because it's based off of principles, but um, we talk about it eternal perspective on the, on this podcast and, and in Mindset Mastery. And I don't mean to keep plugging Mindset Mastery, but we're, we're covering a lot of the same topics yeah. today because a lot of what's in Mindset Mastery is about wisdom uh, just overall. But wisdom is eternal because wisdom isn't about how do I get what I want today. Sometimes uh, if you pursue what you want, right? Like think about in a conversation where someone makes you really angry. What you want at that moment is to be justified. What right. you want in that moment is to show them I'm, I'm bigger than you are. I'm better than you are. I'll put you down. Right, that'll make you feel good in a moment. 
the next day you'll regret it and realize mm-hmm. that was stupid. And you probably caused more problems than you started with the day before. Yeah. Wisdom, because wisdom is eternal. Wisdom has an eternal perspective. Wisdom will help you do the things that are going to be right today and right tomorrow. Yeah, very good. That's so good. You know, now, you touched on it, I think, already. You talked about the domains of wisdom. You talked about how you can learn from experience. But you also, you talked about level one and level two wisdom. Yeah, before I go to level one and level two wisdom, yeah, I'll just say um, wisdom can come from a couple different areas, right? Wisdom is knowing what to do. Some of that comes from experience. Right. Um, Benjamin Franklin said, this is, this is one of the first quotes, like this would be on my 10 quotes list of like quotes that were with me early in life. Oh, yeah, cool. Benjamin Franklin said, a wise man learns from his mistakes. A wiser man learns from the mistakes of others. Yeah. Some wisdom comes only from experience, right? It just doesn't have to be your experience. Right. Because it is the fool who says, you've heard this before. Maybe you've said it. If you said it before, don't ever say it again. But the fool says, I just have to see for myself. Mm-hmm. Right. Benjamin Franklin says you can learn from another man's experience, but that's not the only way to get wisdom. It's just the majority of the way that people get wisdom. The other way to get wisdom is through the Holy Spirit. Just like Jesus said about the Holy Spirit, he said, I'm going to leave with you Mm -hmm. the helper, a guide, the Holy Spirit who will guide you and call to your remembrance everything I said to you. Two different things. Right. One is you'll remember what I said. You'll remember the scripture, right? When we read the scripture, the Holy Spirit will help call that to our mind and guide you. Yeah. A guide lives is that's not connected to scripture. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will help you understand, hey, this is what you should do. This is what you should say. There have been times where I felt the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. I'm like, that did not come from any experience that I've had. Same. I knew what to do in this moment, but it wasn't because anybody had instructed me in this. I'm just trying to please God in this moment. Yeah. Right. And so there's I just wanted to create that distinction of yes, wisdom does come from experience. Wisdom also comes from the Holy Spirit. And just see, I, I look at wisdom as a commodity, right? James, the brother of Jesus says, pray and ask for wisdom and it'll be given to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, you're just not going to get a lifetime worth of wisdom all at one moment, right? The same way that uh, we've talked about this before. Those who are faithful with little will become rulers over much. If you are a good steward of the wisdom that God gives you, he'll give you more, mm-hmm. right? I'll give you this amount of wisdom. This is because it is a resource. God gives it to us, gives us wisdom through the Holy Spirit. If you want, if you use this wisdom well, I'll give you more. If you don't use the wisdom I've already given you, why would I give you more? Yeah. Right. So again, all I'm doing right now is just setting some parameters, some explanations of what wisdom is, right? Wisdom is eternal. Wisdom is a, is a resource or it's a commodity that God gives us. Wisdom's, wisdom helps us know what to do. Yeah. And now, now going back though, G, because you touched on the domains, level one and level two is something that you told me about. I'd never heard somebody yeah, put it that way. Yeah, this is kind of just my own paraphrasing of, of the way wisdom in the Bible works. One of the things I learned uh, from one of my mentors and heard other people talk about it is that Pro- Proverbs is the book of wisdom, mm-hmm. right? Pastor Keith talked about reading Proverbs from a young age. I've done the same thing, right? I heard other pe- I heard people talk about how, so how important wisdom is and Proverbs is all about wisdom. So from the time I was very young, I started reading Proverbs every single day. And I can't tell, I mean, it's been hundreds of yeah. times that I've read each of these books and each of these chapters in Proverbs. And they're very simple. But th- again, this is the power of the Holy Spirit. It continues to speak to me. There's times even recently where I read uh, a verse in Proverbs. And I'm like, man, how have I read this verse yeah. like 400 times? Yep. And this is the first time I'm getting this. Yep. That's the power of the Holy Spirit speaking to you. But I say that to say about where wisdom comes from, about what um, about level one wisdom. Proverbs is really simple. Right, like one of the most common things that Proverbs talks about is don't sleep with prostitutes. Yeah, dedicates two whole chapters to it. Yeah, uh, and it gets it gets mentioned like every other yeah. chapter. It's all the <laughs> it's time. Always in don't there. steal from people. Don't lie. Don't sleep with prostitutes. Or, Seems or your to, neighbor's wife. Yeah, that shouldn't you you. If I gave you like the cliff notes of Proverbs, right. then I was like, man, this is the wisest book you could ever yeah. read. And it, it's all about not sleeping with prostitutes. You'd be like, man, this, <laughs> this book doesn't seem that wise. <laughs> right. Here's the thing. Um, a lot of, I call it level one wisdom because so much of what Proverbs is about is do the right things, right? Just do the right things. And that's, if you'll just do the right things that you already know to do, right? And like I said, discipline and wisdom are very connected. Discipline is doing what you know to do. Wisdom is knowing what to do. You'll get to wisdom when you get past discipline and the proverbial pro with the wisdom of Proverbs, the proverbial wisdom is very much a, Hey, just do these things. Just follow the yeah. laws and your life, you'll, you'll appear so wise just by doing the simple things right. Okay, that, I say that's level one wisdom because when you can get that part right in your life, 
I'm going to do what I know is right. Mm -hmm. You'll become so wise. Yeah. When you get that part right, then you get what I call level two wisdom. This is New Testament wisdom. James is like the Proverbs of the New Testament, but a lot of the wisdom in the New Testament it comes from the life of Jesus and specifically his parables. And this is where wisdom is connected to principles. Whenever Jesus tells a story, he'll say, the kingdom of heaven is like this. Right. And then he tells a really simple story, a story of planting, a story of servants, a story of a wedding. He'll tell a really simple story that anyone can relate to. He'll say the kingdom of heaven is like this and then gives an analogy. And what he's saying is if you can understand this, he says the kingdom of heaven, right? And uh, if you want to go, if you want to understand what the kingdom of heaven is, we have a whole podcast on kingdom. You yeah, should listen to it, good. right? I won't break into that now. But when Jesus talk, says the kingdom of heaven is like this, he's saying not just not just in heaven. He's not just he's not saying heaven. He's saying also here on earth. If you can understand how to plant seed, if you can understand how to lead servants, if you can understand how to treat your wedding guests, if you if you get these really simple con concepts, the whole world works this way. Mm -hmm. Everything works this way. Yeah. And so you don't have to have experience in all these complicated matters in life because one of the these parables that Jesus is giving, he's saying this relates to all of life. Yeah. And so you'll come, I, I've experienced this, you'll come to very complicated matters. It's like, man, it would take a lifetime of experience to have solved this problem. But you know what? This is a lot, a lot like one of Jesus's parables yeah. where he said the kingdom of heaven is like this. I already know what to do. Yeah. I got the, I got the spark notes from Jesus. I don't need a lifetime of experience to have the wisdom to solve this problem. So level one and level two wisdom is really just Proverbs wisdom, very much a, hey, do the right thing. Hey, mm -hmm. think this way. Stop being an idiot. Don't sleep with prostitutes. Yeah. Level two wisdom, when you understand this, you'll understand everything else. And remember, wisdom is knowing what to do or knowing what will happen. And when you understand these very simple parables that Jesus tells, you'll be able to look at things and you'll say, oh, this is like that. Yeah. And I, I think it's interesting when you look at the life of Jesus, specifically in Luke, when they talk about it, like there's two times where it says that Jesus grew in wisdom. And, and you think about of all the things that they could say there, they talk about whenever he, when they summarize, whenever he's just been dedicated to the temple and he has a couple people prophesy over him. And then they talk about the story whenever he's 12 years old and he said, I had to be in my father's house or didn't you know I was about my father's business. And both times it says that he grew in wisdom and stature. And I just think of all things like stature, physical. Okay, we get that. You know, he was little, he got bigger. But like he grew, you would think he, put, he grew in knowledge of God or he grew in the power of the spirit or no, he right. grew in wisdom. And so when you think about how vital that is, it's like, okay, th this, there's something to this. Like there's something more than just like, hey, this will help with, me be better. You need wisdom with yeah. the word of God yes. because you can go get a, a doctorate in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. You can go get a doctorate of divinity. But if you don't add wisdom to it, you will not have great application of what the scriptures look yeah. like. And I love that you said when we were warming up, or warming up, prep, preparing, you said that... It's a be, mental warm-up. Yeah, it's a mental warm-up. Uh, it's like stretching. But reading you, the dictionary. <laughs> yeah, I like to break a mental sweat. We did too. read the dictionary. We, Yeah, we did, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that was true. I thought you were quoting White Goodman, which I was proud of you for. Uh, but, uh, I mean, you, you, one of the things you said, though, is because it's the application of knowledge and it's knowing what will happen and what to do, you said that it, it, you see difficulty differently because it gives you the belief that there's a solution. And so you'll just say, hey, Lord, I need wisdom. There's, and what an unlock that is. I was saying to Nick, like, because we're talking about what wisdom does for you. Yeah. Well, it, it helps you know what to do. Yeah. But zooming out from that a little bit, just the way that I look at my life, I use wisdom every single day. Right. Right. Like it's the, it's the most exercise muscle that I have. I'm trying to always be wise in the approach that I have to things and I'll have the answer to a problem because of wisdom. And when I encounter a problem that I don't know the answer to, I just pause and I say, you know what? I know there's a, I know there's a wise answer to this. Mm -hmm. It has not immediately occurred to me. So that what I need to do now is ask for wisdom. Right. God, give me wisdom in this, right? This is obviously the wisdom I need for this door, for this problem is wisdom that you've not given me yet. Right. God, give me the wisdom to answer this problem correctly, to deal with this rightly. When you've walked in wisdom, you know that there's a wise answer to mm -hmm. everything, right? Jesus was the wisest. He played these rabbinical games with the rabbis. Rabbis would play a game of questioning each other. And Jesus gives some very wise answers. Don't Wisdom is not proving people wrong. Right. Wis, again, wisdom is pleasing God. Mm. And so even against people that hated and persecuted Jesus, he could plant the right seeds in them. He could plant seeds of faith. He could make them doubt their own way of thinking. He opened them up to who God was. And that's what pleases God, to glorify God. How do mm -hmm. I glorify God in the situation? 
because Jesus is so wise, he never lost one rabbinical game. Yeah. They would because the, the game they would play is a game of questions, right? And they would often answer your question with a with a more intelligent yeah. question or a wiser question to answer it with the question and give a question back at the same time. And Jesus was always the last person to ask a question mm-hmm. with the rabbis. He would always stump them. And so that's one of the powers of wisdom is knowing how to deal with these very difficult situations. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I mean, which is one of the many things, but I mean, if you want to really find out what wisdom does, I would, I would encourage you to read Proverbs 8. There's so much in there about it. it'll help you build. It'll give you insight. It'll help you avoid evil. You'll grow in purity and righteousness. It brings riches. It'll bring impact general, generationally. I mean, there's so many scriptures in there that when you see the value of wisdom, I think anybody that wants to live an impossible life or that's listening to this podcast, as you read what wisdom brings, you're like, oh, I need wisdom mm-hmm. desperately. Like, I think when you start reading the list of things that's in there, I mean, it says, by wisdom, a house is built. Uh, there's so many it's things certainly, in there. It's certainly, it's one of the foundations of our thought process here at The Impossible Life, which is based upon biblical thinking, yeah. right? Wisdom helps you realize, even if I don't know the, the answer to this mm-hmm. problem, there is an answer. There is a wise answer to this problem. Yeah. The impossible life thought process looks at difficult things or seemingly uh, impossible things, what the world would call impossible, and say that there is a possible way, Yeah. right? When you see a chance, there's, there's a physical answer to the things that you're struggling with, like I can grow in certain ways, and then also in areas that require wisdom. If I don't have the right wisdom, I can get that yeah. wisdom. So it'll make you look at all the things in your life and say, man, I, I don't know the answer. Wisdom does. Yeah, and and that's like that sounds like, oh, that's cool, but I'm telling you, man, I use this all the time. Like when I say I use this, I mean, I pray because I believe that God God will get, I take him at his word. So sometimes I'll be sitting down working on client work, and truthfully, I don't really know what the right answer is. You know, I'm like, okay, I'm about to dive into something, and I've like got some ideas, but honestly, I have no idea, and this is stretching me. And I'll sit there, and I'll be like, you know what, Lord? I know that I don't know, but you do. And so I, I pray. I say, just guide me. Like what you said, the Holy Spirit will guide you and bring to remembrance. I say, guide me. Now, this is working on marketing work for businesses that has, you could easily just go, oh, well, that's not, that's nothing to do with kingdom. That's nothing to do with God. But I know that, that his spirit's in me, and I, if I pray for wisdom, that he answers, and he cares about what we care about. So I will pray for that. And I'm telling you, man, every single time, it's amazing to me how things just start to make sense. And so it's such a massive unlock. Um, now, you'll, you may, this may be not necessary to say, but I'm going to say it anyways. Uh, what wisdom is not is trendy. <laughs> like, yeah. We're saying all these things that it is. Well, wisdom, it's important to say what it's not. Wisdom is not intelligence. Right. It's not like how smart you are. Wisdom right. is not IQ. I know some wise people who have very high IQs. I also know some wise people have a very average IQ. Right. Average IQ and incredibly wise. Yeah. It's not the same thing. Right. Intelligence can also work against your wisdom if you lean too much on it. Yeah. Right. Good. If you if you have wisdom, you can benefit from your intelligence. You don't have to have intelligence to have wisdom. And if you lean completely on your intelligence, it'll rob you of wisdom. Very good. By the way, pop quiz. Do you know what the average IQ is in the United States? 100. It's uh, 98, actually. No, the, the IQ test is designed that 100 is the average and they continually modify I the know IQ this, test. But the average IQ of a person in the United States right now is 98. So it's actually less than average. I'm telling you, dude, I'm telling you, I was just with people when we were talking about this and I looked it up okay, as well. Okay, well, I'm telling you the IQ test is a test that is designed dude, to where I, one, <laughs> what a 100 <laughs> IQ is today is different than what a 100 know, IQ dude, was 30 years ago. We've this on the podcast before. I was just trying to see if you'd get the number right. And like, I, I, this, is where, this is what makes me laugh. <laughs> Garrett's like, no, I know that's what Google says. I know that's what this you know documented source says, but this is what it actually is. Anyways... That didn't go how I thought it would. <laughs> Let's move on. All right. Um, so, you know, it's like, so I was thinking about where we see wisdom in the modern day. And I, I really, because like I asked you, I'm like, where do you think people go for this? It was a question I asked you all earlier on this podcast. And the only thing I could think of was like the Stoicism books, Ryan Holiday, right? Like, and so I was like, I wonder how many books he sold because he has become very popular in society, which I'm glad because there's a lot of wisdom in Stoicism. Uh and and he sold dude he sold five to six million books and he's been on the bestseller list for two hundred weeks, which is you know somewhat encouraging. The doesn't matter who your guru is, really wisdom is what are you like? How are you learning and growing and applying what you've learned? Right. If people were half as intelligent or half as wise and used half of the knowledge mm. in the books that they bought, yeah, America would be a way better country. No, that's very true. Do you agree with the term that all wisdom is God's wisdom, G? 
Absolutely. Yeah. I, th- there's a script. I think there's a scripture in Proverbs that says like no wisdom can stand against God or something like that. And it's it's uh, I, I'm, I'm not getting if, that right. If you if you start opening or expanding the definition of wisdom, you could say worldly wisdom. Right. Right. And and then you go well worldly wisdom. Worldly wisdom is being is knowing what to do for selfish interest. Right. Right. The definition that we're standing on of wisdom today is about pleasing God. Right. And so let's get like let's go into that. Like so where, you, where if, does it come from? Like I said, wisdom is eternal. Worldly wisdom is not eternal. Right. If you have and, and we talked about this some on, on the Kingdom podcast, but if you have godly wisdom, it'll serve you, and this is kingdom thinking. Kingdom thinking serves you in this life and right. in the next. Worldly wisdom does not serve you into the next life. Mm-hmm. It'll lead you wrong. You think you're doing the right thing for this life, and it's leading you wrongly for the next. Yeah, very good. Now, uh, to that point, though, I mean, so we say, where does it come from? I mean, there's the scripture says, fear the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. And so it's like having a desire to please God, like you said, is like the beginning of wisdom. And you ha- and like I think it's uh, I think it's Proverbs four. It talks about you have to seek it like it's the most valuable possession. Yeah, that, prize like a jewel. It. Yeah, you have to prize it. So like you have to. It starts from that desire. To, uh, I think people go like they they have the wrong treasures in life right. and really don't see how valuable wisdom is. Yeah, I agree. In the same way that being wealthy in life is not just about how much money you have in a bank account. Right. Right. You can have a lot of money, and if you don't have family that loves you, you don't have yeah. a wife that loves you, you don't feel fulfilled in life. You're very poor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or you can have an average bank account and have a lot of those things. And I would consider you very wealthy. Yeah. Agreed. Wisdom is one of the great treasures of life. Right. Like you can have all of the resources, but if you don't know what to do with them, you'll lose them. You'll ruin them. You'll hurt yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. If you knew what to do. And this is Robert Kiyosaki talks about this. He's I don't know if he's a billionaire yet, but he's worth a lot of money. He's hun- hundreds of millions in real estate. And Robert Kiyosaki talks about he says, my, my wealth doesn't really matter to me anymore. He said, you could take it all away. And what I've spent my lifetime building, it would take me five to seven years to rebuild. Yeah, because of what he's learned and how to do it. Oh well, yeah, he said uh, he said to have a net worth of around a hundred million actually, but uh, this could be outdated. So yeah, he had unfortunately had a divorce uh, in two thousand seventeen. That'll hurt your net worth. That'll definitely hurt your net worth. That's what this is. That's what this is related to. So yeah. Anyways, uh, moving on. <laughs> So, yeah, so, I mean, like, we, I just want to reiterate that. It comes from the having that fear of the Lord. It's that desire to please God and then to value it. Like, you really have to, the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. That's what it says in Proverbs, which sounds very uh, cryptic. Uh, I, I think the only, reason, only, the only reason I have any wisdom at this point in my life is because I learned to desire it from a young age because yeah. I had mentors and fathers who talked about it so often. So when I was still a teenager, I thought, man, I've got to really like learn what this wisdom thing is. Yeah. Whenever you decide, like it's the beginning of getting wisdom is deciding I want wisdom. Yeah. And so that's it. So that is the process. Like it starts with the desire and then obviously the desire is then you start to seek, right? And then, then the fun part comes, G, which there's a lot about Se- this. Seeking is, seeking is, so desire is, hey, I want wisdom. Right. Right. You may you may think I want power. You may think I want intelligence. You may think I want authority until you decide like, no, I need wisdom until you've run into the problems in your life that you realize like, man, these are wisdom problems. Understand what problems you're facing. Yeah. Right. Like if you have cancer, that's not a personal fitness problem anymore. Right. Right. You can't push up your way out of cancer. Right. You've got other issues that you have to solve. You will find like you need to understand what problem is my, am I really solving? Mm-hmm. What what resources what skill sets do I need to solve the problem that I'm solving? When most people don't desire wisdom, don't have to desire wisdom until they get to a place in their life where they say, I've tried everything, nothing's yeah. working. And they're asking the wisdom question, what do I do? Yeah. Right? When you're, if you're asking, what do I do? You need wisdom. Yeah. Right? So if you're, if you're coming to that place in your life, you need to desire wisdom. Part of desiring wisdom is like scripture says, prizing wisdom and yeah. valuing wisdom. So to seek wisdom is to go on this journey of like, where does wisdom come from? You, you try to find wise people. Mm-hmm. What does wisdom look like? You listen to podcasts. You listen to books. Make sure you're listening to the right people. Make sure you're putting value in the right things. But you go on this journey of trying to discover where do I get wisdom from? Then what comes after that is humility. Yeah, right? that's fun. Um, scripture says, the Bible says that God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Mm-hmm. Humility is what opens the door for wisdom to happen in your life, right? Because think about you go through something difficult and you have a, like a lot of times the stuff that if you're going through like a challenge in your life right now, I got plenty of challenges going on in my right, life right now. If you're going through a challenge right now, if you don't have humility in what you're going through, you won't learn from it. Yeah. Very when good. you have, because when you say to yourself, like we were talking about earlier, Wisdom is no, when you have wisdom or you value wisdom, you know what wisdom is, you know there's a right answer. Yeah. And so by humility, 
I say, God, I don't know the answer mm-hmm. to this. Like, help me understand. It takes humility to say that. If you're right all the time, if you already know, why would you ever, you're never yeah. going to gain any wisdom. So to grow in wisdom requires humility that you say, you know what, God, you are so big and I am so small. There's so much that mm-hmm. I don't know, right? But you have all the answers. I don't have them. Bow before the Lord. Say, God, can you, can you give me this wisdom? Can you help me think the way that you think in this situation? Only by humility. Like this is the blockage yeah. for so many people time. and they're growing in hum- Until you have humility, you'll never grow in wisdom. Yeah. Does it matter what journey you go on? Does it matter who your friends are? Does it matter how much money you have? You will not grow in wisdom until you have humility. Yeah. And I mean, so much of Proverbs deals with that where it talks about how you deal with correction as being something I mean, you could say one of the hallmarks of humility is or one of the hallmarks of, of wisdom is humility Absolutely. and also how you deal with correction. So ask yourself the question, last time somebody came up to you and said something to you that you need to do better or gave you feedback that wasn't, hey, you crushed it, how did you take it? Was your first reaction to be like annoyed or to feel rejected? Or Jim Rohn says feedback is the breakfast of champions. Right. Right. That's only if you have the desire yeah. to grow. Yeah. If what you prize most in life is that people praise you, mm-hmm. is that you feel good about yourself, you won't grow in wisdom. Yeah. You'll find people who affirm you. Yeah. If what you prize is to grow in wisdom, you will welcome criticism. Yeah. Man, is this, this is a, it's really a Socratic way of thinking. Socrates went everywhere saying, what can you teach me? What can I learn mm-hmm. from you? That's why he became so wise. Yeah. And the opposite is, is if you if you can't take correction or like you have to get run over by a truck before you learn your lesson, you're a fool. I mean, it says one of my favorite scriptures says a wise man learns more from a rebuke than the hundred blows on the back of a fool. What does that mean? You're beating this guy with a stick and he's not learning the lesson. The other person, you can no, just hum- go, no humility. Yeah. The, yeah. The fool is just like, they have their reasons. Oh, I'm just going to keep doing Oh, It's not that big a deal. Whatever the story is that you're telling yourself. Right. I mean, you have a saying, you can either be humble or get humbled. And I've heard you say that a lot of times. And man, be is a lot easier than get. Yeah. You can choose to be humbled, right? be humble, or you can get humbled. Getting humbled is going bankrupt. Getting humbled is going through divorce. Getting humbled is extreme failure or pain in whatever mm-hmm. situation you're going through in life. If you don't want those things, Hum- having some humility, yeah. seeking wisdom. I'm not saying is a 100% block against those things because sometimes God ordains for bad things to happen to you because it's for you and mm-hmm. it's a great experience he wants you to have, right? You're going to learn from this. You're going to mature from this, right? So I'm not saying wisdom will make sure those things never yeah, happen to you, good. but wisdom will keep you from doing that to yourself. Yeah, very, very good. So the process goes, G, you desire wisdom, you seek it, then humility comes. Either, whether, either, yeah. whether you, be, whether you want be, it or not. Be humble or get humbled. <laughs> yeah. And then the great part, you grow. And and much like... I, I know many men who that's where they're... They're, they're very wise. And they'll tell you how they got humbled. Right. Harshly. Yeah. Right. And so some of... Like I said, it's one of the first ones that stuck with me. Benjamin Franklin. A wise man learns from his mistakes. A wiser man learns from the mistakes of others. Um, I've looked... Some of the, the people in, in my life who've been a model for me, who I've learned from... I've seen them get humbled harshly in mm-hmm. business, and I thought, I don't want that to happen to me. Yeah. I really have no desire to go through what they've went through. So what do I need to do? How do I need to think? How do I need to live yeah. so that that doesn't happen to me? And there's humility in that just to say, like, that could happen to me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. I mean, if, if you sit there and go like, oh, it's not going to happen my way. I'll tell you what, I was that fool. Pride is I can walk the same path and get a different experience. Yes. Oh, man. And I can, I, man, I'm thinking of, yeah. Anyways, I won't go into some of the specific <laughs> examples, but I, I've had some very specific conversations where you're warning somebody and you're saying, hey, you're either the one person in all of history that's that's not this not going to happen to, or you're headed for a huge Like disaster. I said earlier, it's the fool who says, yeah. I need to see for my, myself. Yeah. A friend says to you, hey, you don't want to go down that road. Mm-hmm. I've been down that road. Yeah. Right? And, you know, I go back to, this is a great time to go back to the Mentors, Heroes, and yeah, Teachers podcast. Good. If a mentor says to you, I've been down that road, you shouldn't go down that road. You are a fool if you say, well, I just need to see for myself. Yeah, so good. Well, the great thing is, so you have desire, seek, humility, and then growth. And the thing about uh, when you get to growth is you're going to grow in wisdom. The wonderful thing about wisdom is the more you get of it, the more you want. So then you go back and you desire again, and you keep, it, this just keeps going. Like Absolutely. You, the more you grow in wisdom, the more you yeah. realize how valuable wisdom is. Seriously. And you just say, what do I need to do to get more? Yeah, I can say that you've probably been one of the people that's given me the most wisdom in my life with just all the different things that you've, you. you've shared with me throughout the time. And I, I will say... It, that is exactly what it is. I cannot stress the importance of wisdom. Actually, one of the key things that we're going to we're give you some of the practicals to grow, and I, and I learned this from... 
Pastor Keith Kraft, is to pray for wisdom, man. I te- he said that from a young age. He, he, I mean, he, he says it all the time from the front. He goes, I tell my kids they're smarter than me, but I'm wiser than you because I've been praying for wisdom since I was nine years old. And he talks about how his mamma and his mom would teach him to pray for wisdom. Mm-hmm. So I've started doing that with my kids. Every time we pray, we pray for wisdom. and, and what- Pray for wisdom. I pray for physical strength as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, no, I do. I learned. I, Pastor Keith told me that when I was young. Like, what are the things that you want? Pray for those things. Yeah. And so he would always talk about praying for wisdom. I pray for wisdom, and I've prayed for physical strength yeah. since I was young. I should have prayed for physical endurance. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. I should have prayed for like you know a good uh, thermoregulation. Yeah. God was like, check. I got you on the strength <laughs> portion, but uh, you left something out there, buddy. Uh, yeah. But the, but but like I said, going back to the value of wisdom, because I feel like I have grown in that so much. I cannot tell you, I've shared with this before, it's such an unlock whenever you start to have the wisdom of God grow in your life. I've been in rooms where I would say I have the least impressive resume, I'm the least qualified, but because I I have wisdom, I feel like I've got an unfair advantage, and not because I'm like trying to like use it for myself, but there's an authority and a confidence that comes whenever you're te- whenever you're drawing you, from the wisdom of God. You can see the cards before the dealer yeah. plays them. Yeah, you have this uh, this confidence because you're drawing from the wisdom of God. You know the guy who made the rules and made the game. That's a different level than somebody who's just really well, it, good at it. It also it. gives you, right? Wisdom comes from fear of the Lord. Yeah. Oswald Chambers, when you fear God, you'll fear nothing else. These things go hand in hand. When you have wisdom, yeah. you're not afraid of things yes. because you say, whatever happens, I'll know what to do. Yeah. So good, G. So the practicals we said is like, obviously, you want to pray, like Pastor Keith said. I mean, we've talked about it. You and I, I, I was reading Proverbs, a proverb a day long before I met you as well. That's something you've been doing since you were a kid. Same with me. Reading proverb every day, reading books for wisdom. I love reading personal growth books. I read books by Christian authors like John Bevere or whoever else it may be. I mean, I'm always reading. I was talking to Pastor Keith actually last week, and he said that he reads a book a week, bare minimum, and he always has three books on the go. And he said that there was times in his life where he was reading a book a day or like four to five a week, which is like, this guy's been doing this for over 40 years. And he's, he's got still, a lot of books in his library. But he's still reading one a week. And he says he's always got three on the go, one that's spiritual, one that's personal growth, and one that's business. So he's always, like, there's, to me, he's one of the wisest people I've ever met. And so there's so much wisdom in just seeing, and if you look at anybody you admire, Tony Robbins, one of the first things he did before he came on the scene was he taught himself to speed read. And so he will absorb massive amounts of information Mm -hmm. and still does. So, like, wisdom leads some clues, right? And then so we said, prayer, read. Well, here's one of the things we're alluding to that we're not saying. Get around wise people. Walk with the wise yeah. and become wise. And I, I would even just say, right, like Benjamin Franklin said, wise man learns from his right. mistakes. Wiser man learns from the mistakes of others. You can learn from the good experiences yeah. of other people and the bad experiences of other people. It just starts with, like in the process, desire wisdom, yeah. seek wisdom. Once you start seeking wisdom, you can pick it up in all different places. Very good. There's some great wisdom you'll learn from being around really wise people. There's also some wisdom you'll learn from being around foolish yeah, people. Very much. If you has if you have a desire seek wisdom lens on when you're around those people, you say, "Man, I, I I realize how these people got to the life they're living, yeah. and I won't I won't do those things." Yeah, big time, man, and, and, and it does. Wisdom speaks to you all the time. It, it's it's amazing. Now, hey, so gee, I guess so. I hope everybody that's listening to this now wants to go out seek God, like pray for wisdom, read, get around wise people, and grow in wisdom. And uh, according to Solomon and what we saw in the Bible, everything just works out once you have wisdom, right? Gee? <laughs> Oh, wait. Yeah, um, <laughs> Little warning here. Solomon is the wisest man who ever lived. Didn't say he was perfect. Oh, shucks. And so if you read Solomon's story, you should. Uh, read through First Kings. Read Proverbs. Read Ecclesiastes. You'll see some of what happens in Solomon's life. And I'll just say wisdom isn't everything. So that Bible says prize wisdom. Get wisdom. But wisdom isn't everything. You need to continually have a fear of God. Can The wisdom, uh, the Wisdom comes from a, from a fear of God, and if you lose your fear of God, you will take that wisdom and you will serve yourself with it. Yeah, and you will do what, what you or you'll get to a place that Solomon got to in his life, where he felt like in Ecclesiastes, nothing mattered, nothing mm-hmm. was worth anything. I've had it all, I've done it all, I've tasted it all, and it's ash. Yeah, right. And so just know that wisdom is very valuable, but wisdom will help you seek your purpose. Wisdom will help you please God. If you stop wanting to please God, if you stop pursuing your purpose, there's nothing that can help you. Very good. Now, I want to just ask one last question before we go, G, because I asked you this when we were prepping, and I thought it was your good answer I want to share with everybody. So we, we just mentioned that Solomon fell off the rails. If you don't know the story, he married a thousand women. Many of them served foreign gods. He did what God told him not to and stopped honoring the commandments of his dad. Like, what do you think you know, to have such a wise heart and to go wrong, like where, where did he miss it? Um, this is my, 
personal view of Solomon, because it's not overtly clear yeah. in the Bible of where Solomon got off the rails. But one of the things you do see in Solomon's life that many of his counsel were from da- mm-hmm. were David's men. Benaiah, for example, yeah. one of my favorite leaders, who uh, he was one of David's mighty men. He was the captain of Solomon's guard. Some of these men who served with David, obviously they were younger than mm-hmm. David, ended up serving with Solomon. And Solomon lost his way in the end of his life. And I believe that a lot of the men who were serving around David, who served with Solomon, when all of David's men around Solomon started dying, Solomon lost his way. Mm-hmm. And really just to simplify that, what you need around yourself is other strong Very men. Good. Yeah. When I think Solomon got into a place of isolation, Solomon got into a place where he didn't have the right people around him speaking into him right after his father died. Then he had the people that his father valued. Yeah. Right. So he had the wise yep. voices in his life. And when he lost those other great men around him, that's what, cause think about it. Those men all died. These men are, are wise because well, they, they led my father, my mm-hmm. father, you know, created me. I'm, I'm in the place that I'm in because of all of these people. So obviously you value those people. When, when Solomon started saying, well, I'm the wisest person who ever lived and these people are all gone, mm-hmm. all gone. Who can counsel me now? Yeah. Right. I believe that's how Solomon got to the place that he was in. He lost the strong men that were around him. So good. All right, y'all. Well, we hope that you are seeing wisdom in a new light. Pray and ask God for wisdom. Read Proverbs, read the word of God and get around the right people, man. Let's get some wisdom. 